What it do, what it do, it's 903 Boxing, I'm your host, Charles J. Say, man, uh, got some shit to say, man. Uh, another story, but before I could ever get to that, and the only reason why I'm finna tell this story, because, you know, I started the little Texas Prison Series, and it's some I'm not real excited about it. Um... I really don't give a fuck about no prison story. Really don't give a fuck about it's nothing impressive, bro. It's nothing about prison I can tell you motherfuckers that's impressive. Um nah bro. Nah bro. Uh most of the fights I had, uh, I don't even know what it was over. Uh, most of it wasn't even my fault. It's a lot of shit. Um I'm not proud of that shit. I was a follower. Um yeah, I was a complete follower and I lost I lost partners. I lost, I lost, I lost uh, friends because of following another person's lead that wasn't organized. Um, let me make something very clear. I don't have nothing against gangs or none of that. There, I, well, I ain't gonna, yeah, I'm not a, I ain't, I'm not knocking whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to bang, do your thing, bro. If if that shit works for you, let it work for you. Uh, as for me, uh, d- d- don't no motherfucker speak for me. Uh, I learned some shit real quick in prison. The baddest motherfuckers don't bang. Don't get me wrong. I met some badass bloods. I met some tough crips, some tough, a lot of shit. Uh, met a couple of tough Mexicans by four tough white boys. Yeah, it's a couple of tough motherfuckers I met. Uh, the baddest motherfuckers. I, matter of fact, the coldest motherfucker on the unit was a motherfucker named Zach. Uh, he was about 44. Had been gone by 23. Uh, solo, and that motherfucker, I, bro, he used to check Mexicans for fun. One one day, that motherfucker told me, "Watch me check this Mexican. Watch me check this hoe." Yeah, he's just fuck with people and shit. Like motherfuckers was just terrified of him, bro. Uh, and he fought with no guard. Yeah, real swift, like. And I'm gonna tell you something. That's one motherfucker. I swear, I worked out with a lot of people. That motherfucker made me quit. Yeah, he had me doing uh push up. Well, he had me doing a lot of shit, but he had me doing push ups on your fucking knuckles. Yeah, that type of shit. That's why when you dap that motherfucker, he damn near break your fucking knuckles every time he dap you up. Anyway, uh, 
Yeah, so just saying, I, I met a lot of tough motherfuckers, but the baddest motherfuckers I met were solos because I just want to explain something about being solo because that's how I feel on YouTube. I'm a solo. Uh, I fuck with a couple uh, channels. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, I like to see black uh, channels grow. I like to see you brothers uh, shine. Uh, but I'm solo. Just want to make that very clear. Uh, no more any misinterpretations. Uh, yeah, just want everything understood. That will, therefore, it won't have to be too much goddamn explaining. Uh, I'm not with nobody. Uh, I'm with 903 Boxing. Uh, I'm your host, Charles J, and that's it. And nothing else. Um, one thing I learned about black folks, uh, we not good at starting uh, any kind of organization. We not good at starting shit. Uh, we really not because we don't. For one, you can't start nothing unless you get all black folks to be a part of it. And that's something we have a problem with. That's why I say we just need just be regular black. That's what black black folks don't need no name. We don't need no title. We don't need no color. We don't need none of that shit. We don't need no kind of organization. We just need to be black. That that's the only that's my uh uh solution. But anyway, the reason why I make this video is because it happened to me, bro. Yeah, my homeboy, my my mom supposed to be my dog. He he tricked me. Yeah, he tricked me into fighting for him. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, it wasn't my fight. It was his fight, bro. It was ordered. Uh, he was supposed to fulfill those obligations. He never did it. He tricked me. Uh, I had no problem fighting. I just didn't. It wasn't my fight. But anyway, uh, so I'm saying that to say this. Devin been calling our tank a long time. Never went viral. His call outs never went viral. Mike Tyson never brought it up. Media, nobody brings it up. Nobody brings it up. You never hear it on Showtime, ESPN, or The Zone. You never hear it on no platform that Devin is constantly calling out Tank. Devin has said uh, in an interview before, they said, what fight do you really want the most? Well, who do you really want to beat the most? Tank. Uh, no hesitation. Tank. He said that's the fight. And he never said it's about money. Nah, I just want to beat him. That shit personal, bro. So, I, listen, I think Shakur is a very good fighter. But after Shakur fight, like I said, he never called out Devin. They gave him the mic, and they asked him about Devin. They didn't ask him about nobody else. Uh, so that wasn't a call out. But when he said Devin's name, every channel reported that. So I'm just, I'm just looking at, so now Devin, look, Tank was his fight. So now I, I got to fight Shakur, then I got to fight Tank. So I'm just saying, like, you know, it happened to me before. Uh, another thing I want to point out, uh, Benavidez. I really don't give a damn if you get to Canelo. Listen, I don't give a fuck about no Benavidez versus Canelo. You must, a lot of you, that's some, really, that's a casual type. That ain't no diehard. Because, you know what, Canelo gonna stop him, bro. You motherfuckers act like y'all don't know box. Canelo got a granite chin. And David ain't got no devastating power. So, I don't know how anybody thinks David Benavidez beats Canelo. Canelo gonna stop him, bro. Canelo got he got he got devastating power, bro. Canelo uh Caleb Plant didn't have no power. Canelo stops David Benavidez, and it's easy. Cause he gets hit easy, bro. It ain't that hard to figure out. So this ain't no super chess match and trying to figure out, damn, what would Canelo have to do to beat David Atlanta left hook? That same left hook he hit Caleb with. <laughs> it ain't that hard to figure out, bro. Uh, maybe if David Benavidez one day worked on his defense, which he never will, and his father don't care about that, if he ever worked on his defense, maybe I'd change my mind. He has no chance against Canelo. When you're talking about somebody who got precise punching power, and he's a devastating counterpuncher, he's a natural counterpuncher. David style is tailor-made for Canelo. So I don't give a fuck if he get a shot, and he snorted powder. Uh, I know if Jamal Cholo or Andre had ever snouted some powder, they wouldn't even be fighting right now. So I really don't give a fuck if he get a shot. And you know, you motherfuckers have fought. Boy, this almost as tough of a fight as the civil rights movement. The way you motherfuckers have fought and said David has earned his right just by beating Caleb. 
yeah, just by being Caleb, that gives him his rights. And, and, and yeah, he got his rights now. And Caleb just, he just got stopped by Canelo. What the fuck does that prove? That don't mean you automatically fight Canelo. Uh, Jamal been waiting for years. Andre been waiting. This dude's been waiting way before you pimping. You got to get in line. So that's how I feel about that. A lot of people now all of a sudden want to start a revolution and Canelo can't fight nobody else but David Ben. Y'all never said that about Jamal, though. You motherfuckers never said when Andre had the other belt at 160 that Canelo can't fight nobody else but Andre. So I don't give a fuck about Benavidez fighting. Just want to let you motherfuckers know that. Another thing I no longer give a fuck about, uh, I no longer give a fuck about in a way versus cool boy. Yep. Uh, I had to, you know, um, that's why I can't be fair. I, I sometimes I feel like I'm fair and I don't want to be that. I want to be as far from fair. I'm black. That's all I want to be. I don't want to be nothing else. I don't give a fuck about fairness. Uh, fairness don't exist in my world. Uh, but anyway, fuck in a way and cool boy should fight Rousseline. A black fighter who's been calling you out, and yeah, we need to we need to start a revolutionary for Re, Re Salim. We need a revolution for Re Salim. If you motherfuckers can fight for David, if you motherfuckers can, can fight and say Ryan deserves a shot and all this shit here, you motherfuckers need to fight for Re Salim. So yeah, that's what I think. I think Cool Boy need to fight Re Salim. So yeah, I don't give a fuck about the NOA fight. Uh, back to Texas prison. Uh, this has led me to tell this story because, you know, uh, okay, I, I got to make this quick because I, I really don't want to uh, drag this on too much. Um, okay. Had a partner out of Herm Clark. Uh, at this time, I hadn't been in prison, but uh, a couple months. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was very confident. Uh, I had several fights in the county. I, yeah, I was about nine and zero. Um, I felt very confident. Um, yeah, so my confidence was through the roof. I wasn't worried about no fighting. I wasn't worried about. And actually, I wanted to fight because I wanted to prove myself and I wanted to earn some more stripes and shit like that. And that's what my mind. I wanted to. I looked at prison as almost exciting. It was exciting going because I felt like. This is how I get my stripes. Um, this is what's going to make me a man. I felt a lot of shit, and I just wanted to be down. I want to be down with you, no matter how. Anyway, I wanted to be down. So, uh, I didn't give a fuck about fighting. So, uh, let me see. Man, we had a lot of bloods in this dorm. Um... Yeah, shit was kind of, it was very bloody. Um, yeah, it was a lot of, matter of fact, uh, yeah, Tootie Hooper, for those from Marshall. Yeah, he was in the tank with me at the time. Yeah, Tootie Hooper, uh, yeah, he had a Marshall. Yeah, he he was my, uh, he was in the tank with me. Uh, yeah, Josh Sawyer was on this unit. Uh, man, my man, uh, his last name, Roach. His name, Kenneth Roach. But he ended up passing though, man. But I used to, I used to fall out of place to go chop it up with him. I got a whole nother story about him. I used to chop, I used to fall out of place. We, we used to rap and shit. But anyway, um, it was a lot of bloods in the dorm. Uh, in this dorm, we kind of, we kind of ran shit. Anyway, um, I was working in the kitchen. Uh, Herm Clark was, cause I don't remember his name. We just called him Herm Clark. He was working in the kitchen. It was a couple more blood. Bloods kind of ran shit in the kitchen. Uh, uh, you had female guards. There was bloods and shit. It was a bloody scene. Uh, anyway, um, her and Cluck had been kind of chopping it up with me. And, it's, and, and, you know, I was a big Roe fan. So this motherfucker knew every Zero song. And even that motherfucker talked like Roe. Yeah, man. I'm listen, bro. He when he talked, it sounded like a 1996 uh, DJ Screw tape. Say, say, Marshall. Yeah, man. That road, man. When I was in the South, man. Say, man. Hey, man. Yeah, we don't fuck around in the North and Acres home, man. I'm from the South, my Herm Claw. All that type. But that's how he talk. That motherfucker talk like he just pulled up a fold with no soda. Anyway, uh. So we used to chop it up and rap and shit. Um, 
So one day, we sitting at the table, uh, eating and shit, and he was just like, he was looking at my tats and shit, because I had just got my blood tats. He had tats with, uh, yeah, what's this on my own, whatever. Yeah, I had a, I got a tattoo with a dog, with a, with a crown on his head, with some paws, and all that, yeah, dog, and I got, yeah, and all that there, and the stars, and yeah, I got all that on me. Yeah, I got a dog smoking a blunt. Yeah, that's the kind of ignorant shit I was on at the age of 19. I got a fucking bulldog smoking a blunt with a crown on his head. <laughs> with piles and flames and shit. Yeah, that was my first prison tattoo. But anyway, he was looking at him like, yeah, that's dope, bro. And he was like, yeah, that's me. I was like, what? He was like, yeah. Talking about the piles and the star. He said, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm a blood. I said, what? You a blood. <sighs> we got back to the dorm, man. I hollered at the homies. Uh, man, her and Klaus say he a blood, bro. Uh, at this time, there was a lot of fighting going on. Uh, things was very strict. So, the homies was like, what? And, you know, motherfuckers called meetings over everything. So, it was a whole meeting. Uh, yeah. We, we put her and Clark on trial. And, yeah, um, he was found guilty. And, yeah, they say we're going to look at him when he get to the dorm. And then it was some homies from another dorm said, yeah, I want to look at him too after y'all. So he got to get looked at twice. Okay. So we go back to my dorm. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember now. Frog was the kind of the leader of, um, of the dorm we was in. Uh, straight out of Keith and Polk, uh, that motherfucker looked like a frog. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, and he could do some shit. <laughs> he used to do some shit with his eyes, bro. He could make a pop out his head. I, listen, bro, when he done that shit, bro, I did a swallow my goddamn tongue. That is the nasty shit I've ever seen in my life. But anyway, yeah, frog. Yeah, he was a five star general, and he had it tatted on him. He had been down by four times. But anyway. So he called us over to he said, uh, okay. Uh and it was several bloods, but he pointed out Shot Town. Now Shot Town, he was a young brother with um uh, but he fell out of Houston. He was from Shot Chicago, but he fell out of Houston. He was like nineteen too. We was out it was a lot of youngsters. So Fry was like, Hey, you gonna look at him? And he was like, Okay. So okay, well, lock bees, let's go. We went on about our business. So I'm sitting at the table. Yeah, with my homie Chevy. Uh, yeah, we chopping up about music. Because that was my whole focus besides banging. If I wasn't banging, I was writing music. So I'm writing and chopping it up, rapping some shit. So Shotown come holler at me say, uh... And he used to rap too. And that's another thing I want to point And you know... He was very he he was one of them competitive dudes. He was one of them try to come hear my raps and then go write some shit and try to and it he was one of he was good at mimicking people. Cause this motherfucker rapped like me and shit. And at this time I hadn't been rapping long either. But anyway, I, it just little shit like that I know. He just bite off you type shit. But he was cool as fuck though. Give you the shirt off his back. Cool as fuck. I, cool as fuck. And he was down for the blood shit, all that. He was a cool, cool brother. But he just had competitive ways when it came to music. And one thing about me as an artist, I've never been competitive. I ain't never heard nobody in, that made the hair on the back of my goddamn neck stand up. And I ain't never felt like somebody that I just wasn't good enough. So anyway, I've never had that problem. I've never suffered from that. But he did. But anyway, uh, he come holler at me. Damn, bro, I hate to do it to my home. I said, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, man. See, this one I fought first, because I'm fresh. I only been down a couple months. This one I find out the city shit. See, I'm East Texas, so, you know, um, you know, they fall out of Houston together. So I'm finding out, uh, I didn't know it was some city plexing with them bloods. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that blood, Dallas bloods look out more for you if you're a Dallas blood and a Fort Worth blood, and they do the DF dub, but Dallas and Fort Worth don't fuck with each other on the streets, and Houston don't fuck with Dallas, and Houston bloods got their own thing, and it, it's a lot of shit like that. And the city boys don't really like us country boys. Uh, they don't. 
uh, but we represent well. But anyway, um, he say, yeah, man, that's my homie, man. We fall out the same, uh, same city, bro. We both out the H. He was like, say, bro, damn, man. Man, can you look at him for me, bro? Man, I don't even think I can do it, bro. Man, that's my partner. I said, say, bro. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about fighting. Uh, yeah, I don't give a fuck about violating him. He got to be violated. But Frog gave you the call, bro. Yeah, Frog. <laughs> Frog, he's a five-star general out of Keys and Polk. Uh, he told you you got to look at him. So all that homie shit, that city shit, uh, go go catch that fade with him, bro. You should love blood more than you love uh, Houston. You should love blood more than you love her or any of that kind of shit. Any hood, blood should come before all that. And the fact that he didn't represent and come in the door saying he was a blood and we had to find out later, you supposed to be mad enough to say, say, bro, you should have represented. So I got to look at you. Um, he said, you know what, man, here, yeah, I'm going to look at him. So this motherfucker stretching and shit. So by this time, I didn't start playing chess or some shit. Yeah, I think I'm playing chess. Uh, yeah, I'm just chilling. Um, I don't give a fuck about watching the fight or none of that type of shit. I was never one of them. Uh, they gonna fight in the back or whatever and do their thing. So I'm playing chess. Uh, I see Shot Town steady pacing. Next thing I know, her and Clark come sit right at the table in front of me and said, "You said you wanted to fight me. You want no, no." He said, "You said you wanted to look at me." Man, I looked at him and said, hell yeah. Because <laughs> I got mad. Because I felt like he called me out. Yeah, so I got up. And we went straight to the back and got at it. Yeah, got straight at it. But anyway, so after the fight, uh, you know, her and Clug, he went downstairs and another dude looked at him. Uh, I want to say his name was Sal. He was from uh, Village Oaks at the cliff. But anyway, the whole point is, um, I ended up doing a fucking violation that wasn't even my fucking violation. Um, for one, I, for one, I went to prison for some shit that involved other people too, and I kind of went down for the shit. Uh, it's a lot of shit, so I can kind of relate to what's going on in boxing. How people throw shit off on you and shit like that. Just, just threw it out. That was some sneaky shit. This month, and so. After I didn't fought the motherfucker, I go back and I'm thinking. Because I seen him when he went over there to Herm Clark. And I said, oh, that motherfucker went and told him that I'm going to fight him. So, yeah, he done that little slick ass shit. Um, it's a lot of shit, bro. Uh, one thing I learned as a blood, I fought way more bloods than Crips. Uh, I fought 80%. Most 80% of my fights was against bloods. It was either violating the blood, heart checking the blood. Uh, yeah, all kind of shit Or blood pissing you off It's a lot of shit Most of my fights have been against blood So it, it's just a lot of shit um, And that's what's going on with boxing um, Motherfuckers is blocking And putting motherfuckers in the way of But you, you know, everybody is saying David Benavidez, that's, that, that's his fight He deserved a Canelo That's his fight, he been calling for it But won't nobody say Say bro, that tank fight, Devin, Devin next after this round, Devin next, bro, he been calling for this. We should call. Ain't nobody, that same energy ain't there. So, yeah, just letting you know, um, I've been through similar shit. I've seen similar shit. Um, but, yeah, yeah, uh, Shot town slick ass, uh, tricked me into fighting her and Clark. Um, yeah, and it was a cool little fight. Uh, yeah, it was a cool little fight. Um... But yeah, man, motherfuckers, you, you just got to watch who you're around and you just got to watch certain situations. But like I said, um, I, I might keep doing this text in prison series. Uh, it depends. But I, I just do it every now and then. But yeah, um, it, it's the way boxing is. It's a bunch of cowards that when you know somebody else will fight, shit, I ain't even got to get my hands dirty. And you know, that's what I did. My first couple years, I was the motherfucker. I'm just fighting fights that ain't even my fight. Wasn't even my fight, but I'm thinking I'm just being loyal. Yeah, so it's a lot of shit. Um, 
but yeah, uh, to those out there, man, just stay stay out the way, man. Stay out the way. Uh, the prison, like, that shit ain't nothing to uplift. That shit ain't nothing to uphold or none of that type of shit. And I'm just so proud of myself that 2013, when I walked out that motherfucker, I told that white boy, you'll never get me again, bro. You'll never get me again, bro. And you motherfuckers should have never, you fucked up and you let me educate myself. That's what you motherfuckers fucked up. You let me educate myself. So, I'm just glad that I'm a better man and... I just um, I just hope somebody that's listening. I just hope that some of these videos, every now and then, you hear something that really motivates you and just, you know, what I'm saying, just, just, just lift your spirit, bro. I know I come on this motherfucker angry a lot, and I come on this motherfucker talking shit, but at the end of the day, I'm all for growth and development. I'm all for the betterment of my people, and I'm for my people first, and my community, and my family, and those that I love. So yeah, this is 903 Box, and I am your host, Charles Jack. With that, I'm out.